Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is chapter four of It's Not That Bad to Lose Your Mind. So with the prologue, I believe this is the fifth installment. This is a story that I wrote when I was 15 years old uh, between like my freshman and sophomore years of high school. So it's fairly old story, seven years old. We are going through them, reading them chapter by chapter. If this is your first one of my videos, I recommend going back to the prologue so you understand what's going on in the story. With that in mind, let's get right to it. Uh, we are on chapter four. I wrote this December 22nd, 2014. That was the tail end of 2014. So this was my sophomore year. And uh, we are getting towards the end of what I have written of this story. So right to it. Chapter four. Where are we going? Rory asked. Some place that'll keep you safe, Asher answered, dragging her by the arm into an army truck. Wasn't I safe where I was, she asked as he buckled her into a seat. Some place safer, he replied simply, walking around to the driver's side and getting in. But just... Asher closed his eyes and leaned his head against the steering wheel. Please, Rory, be quiet. This is for you. Bad things are happening and I need to concentrate, okay? Fine, she said and leaned back against the seat. Thank you, he muttered. Rory felt the car start up beneath her and allowed the soothing rhythm to lull her to sleep. Asher looked at Rory, curled up as small, sorry, line break. Asher looked at Rory, curled up as small as possible on the seat. He felt his eyes sting with tears and looked away, blowing out a breath. She'll be fine, he told himself. She'll be with powerful people's children. The place will be impenetrable. She's safer there and she can inter interact with people. It's what's best. 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 And suddenly Asher was sobbing. He pulled over to the side of the road and sobbed as quietly as he could into the steering wheel. They were only there for a few minutes, but it felt like hours that he was crying. Finally, he finished. Asher glanced over at Rory to double check that she had stayed asleep during his crying fit. She was still asleep, but he could see her eyes twitching violently behind her lids. Asher wasn't sure if that was a good thing or a bad thing, so he decided to just drive quickly to the airport and let someone trained help her. He and Gray had done the best they could with her, but how could two guards, two trained to kill not to help guards, help an insane girl? He blew out a breath and focused solely on the road, just 15 more minutes, then I know that she'll be someplace safe. He glanced over at Rory once more. There was something so familiar about her, but he couldn't place it. Asher shook his shoulders out and thought about anything except for Rory. Knives, swords, arrows, bombs, death, crying, screaming, at least she'll be safe. Line break again. Rory, a voice called. Wake up, sweetheart. Rory managed to slowly open her eyes to a baby blue sky. She was lying on her back in a soft field with ruby red flowers surrounding her. Her head was lying in someone's lap and they were stroking her hair. Rory blinked and turned her head, trying to see the mysterious person. Hello, she asked shakily. Rory, the voice cried warmly. They helped her sit up and she quickly turned around to see her mysterious visitor. She took in the spiked up white blonde hair and the teasing green eyes. Chauncey? The one and only, he replied. Rory stared for a moment longer before launching herself into her friend's arms. Oh, Chauncey, Lillian said she'd gotten rid of you, that you'd done bad things to me, but I didn't believe her. I knew you'd never hurt me. I just can't believe you're here, Rory squealed, hugging Chauncey tightly around her the neck. Yes, Rory, I'm here, and I'd never hurt you, no matter what Lillian says, Chauncey said. Rory quickly pulled back and examined his serious face. What's going on, she whispered. His somber expression didn't change, and Rory's eyes filled up with tears. Chauncey? Rory, Rory, you have to calm down. I have something very important to tell you, and I need you to listen carefully. Are you listening? Yes. Rory wiped at her cheeks and took a shaky breath. Chauncey put his hands on her shoulders and stared intently at her. Novel Europe has declared war. Do you remember what Novel Europe is? Asher and Gray gave me some geography lessons. Okay, you know that Novel Europe and the other worldly countries had a shaky peace treaty. Novel Europe broke it. Okay, why? Because of you. Me? Yes, and I'll explain in a minute. First, you need to know that you won't be staying with Asher and Gray anymore. What? Rory cried. You'll see them again, but they're moving you someplace safer on the Tsar's orders. 
You'll be staying in an underground facility with some other children. Some will be your age, others will be younger. There will be guards there, but they're there to help you. Believe me when I say that. Are you understanding so far? I think so. Who will the other children be? That doesn't matter. There will also be a counselor there. Use them. Let them help you, but don't take the medication they give you. Why? I thought it was supposed to make me better. You can see me, but everyone else can't. You can see Lillian, but everyone else can't. And you have visions and glimpses of the future. And I know it hurts, but you have to push through because the world needs you with all of your gifts. Now they're gifts? Novel Europe made you this way. They need you and that's why they declared war. They won't stop until they have you, but the UCE is determined to protect you. Tsar Elias believes you are special and he is correct. You hold the key to the world's survival. Me? What's so special about me? Rory asked. I can't tell you right now. I don't know when I will be able to tell you. It depends partly on you. You need to figure out how to control the gifts you have. It also depends on me. I'll visit as often as I can, but Lillian makes it hard. The only reason I was able to visit you now is that she's using all of her energy to transfer herself to the place that you're going to, Chauncey explained. Why wouldn't Lillian let me talk to you? The spirit world is a complicated place, Rory. That's all you need to know right now. Okay. Great. Now, I have to go. You're nearing the airport that will take you to your new home, and when you get there, you need to allow people to help you. You're going to need help for the tasks you will have to face. Let these people in. They won't hurt you. What if they do, Rory whispered. Then I'll make sure that their life becomes a living hell. I'm your protector, Rory. I always have been and I always will be. Don't let Lillian twist your mind so that you fear the world. What do you mean? Just promise me that, Rory. And don't tell Lillian that I visited you, okay? I won't. Good. Chauncey wrapped Rory up in a hug once more. Be safe. Be careful. I'll see you soon. Wake up. Rory started awake. Her neck was twisted at an awkward angle and her legs were curled up under her. Chauncey, she asked. No, Rory, it's me, Asher. Come on, we have to go. Asher quickly got out of the truck and ran around to her side. Rory was still working with her seatbelt when Asher yanked her door open and pulled her out. Instead of setting her down, he simply started to run towards the plane with her in his arms. Asher, what are you doing? I'm so sorry, Rory. Sorry? Why are you sorry? Chauncey said Novel Europe declared war. He said I was important. What is going on? Rory demanded. Yes, there is going to be a war. We just don't know where they're going to strike. So the Tsar insisted you be moved with his children. Where will you be? Rory asked as they approached the plane and two guards came towards them. Asher set her down and turned her to face him. She looked up at him and saw the same sad look on his face that was on Chauncey's. I'm going to be fighting, Asher said. What? No, Asher. Rory, this is the way it has to be. You'll be safer with these guards. Asher motioned behind her and Rory realized that the two guards were now beside her. I'm Tyler, the one on her right smiled, and I'm Harold. The one on her left got down on one knee so they were at eye level. Okay, Rory is not that young. I don't know why I wrote that like that. Asher and Gray have told us all about you. We won't let anything happen to you. Asher? Rory turned back to her friend. I would trust these guys with my life. Asher got down and hugged her tightly. And more importantly, yours. They're here to protect you and help you. You'll be safe, Rory. Promise me you'll be safe. Where's Gray? Rory asked. He told me to tell you goodbye and that he's sorry, Asher said. That's not an answer. You have to go with Tyler and Harold now. Promise me you'll be safe. Promise me, princess. I promise, Rory told him. Goodbye, Rory. Asher nodded to the guards and Tyler took her arm. They guided Rory into her pl the plane while Asher watched, not bothering to hide the tears on his face. And that is the end of chapter four. So I do like the dream visit with Chauncey. I would definitely keep that, but I feel like he gives a lot of exposition that is not needed. Um, so I would definitely rework that. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with this chapter. Um, I think it's a lot of jumping around, but to be fair, other authors do that a lot in their books too, so I don't think it's too bad. As with everything else, it would obviously need a lot of rewriting, um, and I would probably need to expand upon it. Like I said, I would take out a lot of the exposition. I don't know that Rory needs to know about 
I don't know that he needs to tell her all of this stuff like point blank when I'm already giving hints to the reader in a different way. I don't know. Uh, but those are some things to think about. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.